1988. The faceoff is set. Jonathan Duhenio for Rutgers in black. And Jamie Susai, the senior for Penn in the whites. The winner of this game will get either Cornell or Delaware in next week's national semifinal. And Penn wins the opening faceoff. Susai lost his stick. Rutgers keeps it in bounds. And a frantic start. It comes to Penn almost. And now it does. Lost by two to Georgetown. Zusai wins the faceoff. Rutgers attacks him. And we get a flag. Remington Reynolds tried to stick check it away. Make it a slash here. Take a look here. Just hacking away. Yeah, it's 26. They said 25. I think yeah. it's 26. That's France Kowiak. Yeah. He's a veteran defensive midfielder with the short stick. Out of the state. Of His mom was a high school girls lacrosse coach for 27 years. Dad was an assistant on those teams. He grew up around the sport. Ultimate lacrosse mom. We were in the car, she gives you a call. We're out getting coffee, and she's talking about, hey, I gotta figure out how to get from Long Island on Saturday to Columbus, Ohio on Sunday to go see CJ tomorrow when Cornell plays Delaware. Tracking a lot of miles. But right now, it's big presence with the long arms and the reach to let it go. It really started in that comeback win on a Thursday night against St. Joe's. He dominated the second half of that game with holding against Penn. So this will be the first face-off win awarded to Rutgers. Mitch Bartolo, the former. Rutgers wins the faceoff, going all the way, not much on it. And there's Birkinshaw, that was an easy one. The coach from Rutgers who coached for many decades, a legend in the sport, Tom Hayes, passed away this year. And Tom Hayes, his influence not only at Rutgers, but with international lacrosse and the sport in general, much better because of him and an unbelievable man too. I remember spending time with him at the World Championships over the years. Just a just a great man to be around. I remember a few weeks back. Live, and can the third and fourth short stick team minis get minutes? Chris Arsiri wins the faceoff. Trying to play to the wing, his pass picked off. Arsiri's older brother, Gerard, was an outstanding Fogo at Penn State. Rutgers in transition, Danninger. The men's lacrosse coverage continues next weekend for the semis. The action begins on Saturday, May 28th at noon Eastern. We'll be on ESPN2. Visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. The semifinals back in East Hartford, Connecticut this year. And they call movement and use Hanley as a decoy. He can get a ton of assists and find those wing shooters. Had only 18 shots in that opening half. Rutgers at 30. Scarlet Knights with Duhenio. Get a chat. He was a late developer. I mean, you look at him now. He's six foot six. A lot of colleges weren't after him. Mike Murphy gave him a chance. He was a slow crease attackman in high school and grew into his body. His mom called him Baby Giraffe. Last week, three goals, three assists, and we'll see Mitch Bartolo in the PLL. His ability to step up in big moments. He's never rattled. Face-off violation on Rutgers, three and a half, and the opposition goes man up. Here comes Shipley, had a steam out of the box. Feeds the wing, and lead. This is Penn's 16th game of the season. Gergar now has scored at least two goals in 15 of them. Penn with a 9-4 edge at the X. Round ball here, Zusai had it, lost it. We get a conference. It will be Penn ball. So Duhenio, according to the officials, knocked it out of bounds. 
plays, and he capitalizes. A top 25 recruit out of high school. Duhenio wins the draw. Fourth tie of the game. Penn has never led. A chance to lead for the first time. Palazzi. So right now they have Hanley at attack. They experimented that for one game this season. Found a way to win. They have two goalies in this matchup who refuse to quit. Rutgers has never trailed in this game. We're tied for the fourth time in this two-way midfielder making an attack-like finish. First career goal for Kinnett. And it comes in the quarterfinal to give Penn its first lead of the game early in the fourth. There's single-season school record. Penn's won the majority of the draws. Zusai, honorable mention, all Ivy. Wins another for the Quakers. Cameron. And Rutgers now with a chance to get back. The quarterfinal round. That's all I gotta say. Drama. And redemption for Coolis, who suffered a head injury on this field against Hofstra and missed seven games. I don't need it right now. And Daniger has been the unsung hero for Rutgers. Three assists. He came into the game with four on the 12 multi-goal games this season. And a big face-off win for Duhenio. Rutgers driving downhill. And an unforced error. But Rutgers holds on. You want to find a turning point? A little more than 10 minutes to go. You called it. Penn had opportunity after opportunity. Shot clock reset after shot. Rutgers showed you. We talked about the depth and their ability to play end-to-end. 104 in a minute. That's a tall but pass. But it's possible. Arsiri wins it to himself. Accelerates ahead. And a timeout called by Mike Murphy before the pass. Just got it in. 48 seconds to go. If you know Penn, 